Hello from Blades Music. It's Sunday night in Canton, Georgia, and I'm coming here tonight to talk to you about four awesome new features to me in Studio One 5.2. Here we go. So the number one feature that I want to talk about, I think kind of I view as more of a bug fix than a feature, but either way, it is very welcome and I think it will make things much more intuitive uh, for those of us with a fader port and Studio One in being able to make the two work together more intuitively. So what I want to show you about this is if we're in the mix view, on the screen, you can see right now I have all of my channels showing. And on my fader port, I have all of my channels showing. Now in the past, in order to synchronize these two things together, there were combinations of things that you had to do. One, you had to go into the actual, you know, visible track view and make sure that your remote was turned on. Two, you had to make sure that on the fader port itself that you pressed shift all to get yourself into all user mode or whatever they called that mode to get yourself there. Now, in and of itself, that's not a problem. But there were a couple of things that were wrong with that. One, when you press shift all, there was a tendency for shift to stay clicked. Now, in the way that things were before, if shift was, I always do this to myself. If shift were clicked, and it was in lock mode, the automatic return to zero function would happen as soon as you touched any fader. And invariably you were in this shifted mode all the time when you wanted these things to work together. So two things that have improved here. One, shifted mode doesn't allow that to work anymore. You actually have to deliberately hold shift and touch the fader to get it to return to zero like that, as opposed to being into shift lock so that doesn't accidentally happen anymore and two you only have to be in the regular all view in order for your on-screen stuff and your fader port stuff to match so here's what happens instead so let's say i want to see just my vocal tracks what i do is i'm going to hide all of these other tracks and you can see that my fader port goes down to just the four vocal channels and that on screen, I have just those four vocals. It's actually three channels and a bus, right? And if I were to add, let's say, for example, this drum bus here, it automatically shows up as an additional channel here on my fader port as well. I don't have to be in any kind of fancy mode here and I don't have to remember to be in remote mode on the screen either. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen that I actually have a keyboard over here where I've got some shortcuts and some macros set so that I can hit all vocal, drums, guitars, keys, back to all, back to vocals, back to drums, back to all. And it's automatically mapping between the on-screen views and my fader port. I will probably put together a quick tutorial on how to do that separately from this one. Uh, it's in some of my other video content as well. Um, so that's feature number one that I see as very useful. Um, that actual, that sticky shift function is actually uh, very useful for other things as well. It just doesn't wind up being accidentally shift locked all the time. And of course you can still shift lock it by just pressing it once and releasing. But when you do things like you know, shift undo or shift any of these different views or whatever. It doesn't always stick when you don't want it to. Feature number two, score view drum notation support. So as you can see back there, I am a drummer, but I don't really read drum music a whole lot, but I still think that this feature is pretty cool. Like the notation support having gotten added before, I can read a little bit of music and that was kind of neat. And once in a while, I'll actually use that mode. 
But drum notation never really made any sense until now. So now if we're in regular MIDI view here, so there's some tom fills, and then here when we get to the end, you've got some hi-hats and some kicks, and then some snares here at the end. In notation view, you can now see that those hi-hats are on the top as X's as they should be, the kicks down here, and the snares up there on C where they ought to be. This notation is pretty standard stuff, something that you might have seen in any of the drum books that you look at when you're trying to learn something. And it's interesting for me as someone who doesn't read music, when I record my drums, I record them as MIDI all the time. So it, it, it's, a, um, it's just another way to look at an event list, if you will, of MIDI events. Now, I was actually hoping that one of the features that was going to wind up in 5.2 was a MIDI event list, but this is kind of a step in that direction. And one of those cool things that you go, hmm, they're actually paying attention and they're starting to do things that, um, that users are wanting. Paying attention to MIDI is one of those things that I see consistently. So in the score view drum notation support, it's, it's pretty cool that we actually get this view. The next one is also related to MIDI and ancillarily kind of also related to drum editing. So in the MIDI view, one of the features that we've now gotten, I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this a little bit more um, and I'll scroll so that you can see the actual MIDI track up here as well. We have a couple of new, um, what they're calling a smarter MIDI tool. So you can see as we hover over the top part of a note, you get the little graph next to the pencil. If you go to the bottom part of the note, you'll see that we get the cutting tool. Now you've got to be pretty zoomed in to be able to see this, but these are really useful features to being able to one, split notes at different places so you can make two notes out of them. Um, and if you click, you'll see that actually happened. Now I have two different notes. And if I put my cursor there, in that spot and it's a little tricky to get there but you'll see it actually turns into like a glue pen and you can glue those two notes back together that's one feature and the other part is at the top you can see with the little graph there that that is a velocity control so down in the bottom part of the window you see the velocity is changing you see the velocity on the note itself changing um, so it's just kind of a handy way to be able to get to the velocity where this is a fail is that in the drum view, they did not carry this over. So you cannot get to that same velocity feature. You do have to do your velocity still down here in the controllers section. Not sure why they wouldn't have included that. This is actually something about the drum map and the Cakewalk products that I really liked was the ability to adjust the velocity right here at the notes. And in fact, to be able to see that velocity at the notes as well, so that in the event that you were, you know, in one of these other controller views down here, you still had some sense of what the velocity is. I think this is an improvement that they could make maybe in another iteration of Studio One, uh, but definitely a point in the right direction. Now, also with that cut, if you'll notice up here, this is one big MIDI event, that cut here doesn't affect that MIDI event. However, if we do what they're calling a deep cut and I hold alt and click down at the bottom part of a note, you'll actually see the MIDI event split up in the top and then you could actually move the event around separately. Useful for being able to hit things within the middle of a MIDI event and split them out into a completely separate MIDI section uh, within your track view. So again, another uh, interesting, obviously they're paying attention to some features in the MIDI views that are missing. I think there's some other stuff that personas could be focusing on in the MIDI section, but definitely they're looking there. The last piece that for me, I think is really cool is the ability to see the splitter as a plugin. So you'll see over here in my browser window that I've got the splitter plugin selected. 
In the past, what we had to do was click down here in this, um, I don't know, whatever you call this view. And then you would go in here and you would find your splitter. And if you dragged your splitter in, you'd have a splitter here. But once you closed this window, you'd never see it again unless you happen to go back in there. Joe Gilder pointed this out in his videos as well. And now you'll see it actually shows up here as a plugin on the track. So you don't forget that it's there, that you have a split, that maybe you're splitting two different pieces uh, left, right. Maybe you're splitting for the sake of doing some parallel compression or something like that. Now we actually see it here at the channel. You can also see uh, the micro view within that channel. So we can adjust those things. If we double click on the splitter, you'll see that come up. If we adjust the, uh, the volume within that splitter, you'll see that happening um, right there as well. So you can be in the splitter or not and still affect those things, turn on and off, left and right, that sort of thing directly. The other thing that we can do is if we actually remove that, you can, rather than going through that direction, you can just drag a splitter straight onto the channel and have the splitter appear that way. One way or the other, the massive improvement here is that you don't forget that you had a splitter on a channel because splitters are really cool and something very unique to Studio One, at least for someone coming from Cakewalk where we didn't have something like this before, unique to Studio One. And it was kind of a bummer that you could put stuff on there and when you start getting into the complexity of a mix, it was really easy to forget that you had a splitter in place. I hope that this rundown of my top four features for Studio One 5.2 has been useful to you. If you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with somebody else, click the notification bell to be reminded of uh, other upcoming videos. I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.